So for a little while, I'm going to take you through Lightroom and show you how I create some of my moody landscape editing. So let's just jump into it and get started. So hopefully this little tutorial is going to be a cool way of showing you how to enhance landscapes a little bit further. Now to create them moody, you don't always have to do that because sometimes to have images nice, bright and bold and very uplifting, um, that may be more representative of A, your photography style and B, the actual image as to how you took it. So it's not to say that this tutorial is going to be exactly what you need, but it's to give you an alternative. If you're looking for something more creative, if you're looking to try and just jazz up your style a little bit, if you're wanting to actually try and find a style in terms of your photography, um, then hopefully this can be kind of quite insightful. So I've got a range of different images down here that I took uh, a while ago um, at a local forest. So I'm going to start off with this image on screen. Um, one thing that can be very, very useful if you don't have them already is iPhotography's Landscapes and Cityscapes presets for Lightroom. I'd highly advise them, of course, um, but I will show you how some of them work and they apply to kind of the images that I'm actually going to be using today. So once you've got them installed, if you've got them already, you can just flick through and have a little hover over each one. And Lightroom will give you a little preview as to what each one would look like based upon your image. Now, some of them will work really, really well. Some of them may not work that well at all, but it's very, very useful just to try out and give yourselves a little bit of impression. Because remember, presets aren't a one-stop thing. It's not always a case of um, basically applying it and then exporting your image and you're done. Because 99% of the time, there may be some sort of further tweaks to apply. But that's for people that really, really like to use presets. I say I have some of my own, but I'm just going to take you through this from the very base of the image. So without any presets at all, um, and we'll just look at how we can edit just using simple panels at the side here. So one of the first things I do is just to have a look around the image and just basically kind of compare my histogram to make sure that we've not got any areas that are heavily dark or anything that's overexposed. So the histogram, it does show kind of peaks towards the highlights, which because we've got a large swathe of sky there, um, but there's nothing right on the far edge of this, uh, this uh, histogram, so we know nothing's clipping. Uh, but we are clipping at the far end instead in our shadows, which is going to be down to... Oops. Um, let me get it back on screen, <laughs> this area of shadows in the trees here. So I know that's one thing to look at. So because I don't really have many issues with any of the shadows across the rest of the image, I don't think, um, any of the adjustments I'm going to make now are probably be local ones. So to do localized adjustments, I'm just going to get this adjustment brush. So by simply making it larger, I'm going to brush over the area that I want to improve, which is going to be these trees over here. If you want to see what you're actually doing, then just turn on the uh, mask overlay and it just gives you the impression and shows you nice and clearly what you have selected and what you haven't. So a fairly decent selection there. I'm going to turn that off so now I can actually concentrate on my adjustments. So you'll see the uh, panel here is a little bit now of a lighter grey. That's because it's, it's, it's basically an adjustment panel just for the adjustment that we're making without saying the word adjustment too many times. So let's move on. And I'm going to use the shadow tool. As I said, that's one of the things I think was uh, working against me before. And as I actually slide this uh, slider left and right, you can see on my histogram how now I've managed to improve my uh, dynamic range. We've lifted it off the bottom. So we're not touching in the shadows anymore. So there will be detail there. So once you're happy with any adjustments that you make initially in terms of the exposure, once you've got that balanced, uh, you can just simply press done. You obviously, if you wanted to add multiple adjustment layers, if you wanted to go onto this far side over here, I may just do it on this embankment on the right side. Maybe just improve the colors a little bit in terms of the saturation, because though the green is strong, I, th I think we could probably maybe a little bit more, uh, a little bit more be a little bit more saturated ever so slightly. I'm just going to reduce the exposure because by default Lightroom a lot of the time adds the exposure and it does help also to see the selected area. So I'm just going to increase that a little bit more because in the very center of our frame we've got our subject who's wearing that orange top um, and obviously if you know your color wheel quite well you'll know reds and greens work quite nice as an opposite so um, the orange isn't too far off the red I suppose so it, it does kind of combine quite nicely so I just wanted to increase that saturation a little bit there so 
we'll increase it a bit more so we get some nice strong colors. So the next thing I want to have a look at is the sky. Um, I find that's kind of quite flat, quite boring. There's nothing much going on in there. If I just reduce the whole exposure, there is some detail in there. We know that's the case because we weren't clipping on the histogram at the top. Now we can get an adjustment brush and we can go really, really close in and do our absolute best to work in between all these leaves. It's going to be really tricky. It's going to be very time consuming to, to brush around all these leaves. It's going to be a massive pain. So what I tend to try and do instead is use a gradient. Um, so a graduated filter in this instance, Lightroom calls it, uh, and just drag that from the top. Really just kind of covering most of the sky. We can go back and adjust it further. But once we've got our initial gradient set, then I just reduce the exposure. Now, the one thing this can have an effect on is obviously any objects that it actually covers as well. Um, so normally the gradient is obviously is quite soft, but because these trees are quite tall, it's catching some of that and making it a little bit darker. It's not too bad because obviously that's going to help create part of the mood, but it's just something to kind of keep an eye on anyway. So I'm just going to bring it down maybe a little bit. So you can see now we've our white sky has gone from more of a gray to a white. I'm also just going to reduce the highlights a little bit, just reduce the contrast, and you can hopefully start to see a tiny bit of details coming back in from the clouds. So it's just a case of moving each slide left and right a little bit to see how much of an effect it has on your image. Things like texture and clarity won't have a massive effect when there wasn't that much detail in the sky to begin with. Dehaze can do. Um, obviously, it depends upon the lighting conditions, but certainly in this instance, it's going to really, really help by increasing the dehaze. You can see now I'm getting a lot more detail in the, sh in the clouds above. So that's been a very, very useful little tool there. Um, I do like to use vignettes around an image just to kind of encompass the photograph and put attention right onto a subject when there is one. So sometimes I don't necessarily stop at just doing one uh, graduated filter at the top. I may come in and do other ones at the side. I try not to make them as pronounced because they're not necessarily natural. You can have a moody sky looking like that sometimes quite naturally. Light falls in a very universal way, so it doesn't necessarily uh, change it just purely for style. If you get what I mean. So I'm just going to do the exact same again on the opposite side. Try not to, I'll reduce it a little bit. It's only ever so slightly. I'm reducing it, the exposure a little bit more on the left hand side. I don't want to do too much because we've done a little bit of work to the shadows in that area already. So I'll try not to kind of fall over and uh, undo what I've done. I always find a gradient at the bottom of an image works really, really well, certainly to match with the top. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same depth as the top. Um, but it does encompass that top and bottom. And even though we've got a big sky, it makes the image feel that little bit narrower. So there we go. That's what we've got so far. Now I want to go a little bit closer in and actually improve the color and the, the clarity of our subject in the center of the screen. So I'm going to get our adjustment brush one more time. We're going to make it nice and small because she's pretty small in the frame. And I'm just trying to uh, cover the adjustment for most of our subject, oops, I just start moving the layer there. I'm not so much worried about painting in the, the black and everything because there's not so much we can kind of improve with that, but certainly with the orange, I think we could do a little bit more in terms of impact. So um, things like the saturation obviously is gonna be really, really useful. We can also use the hue uh, slider here this little fine adjustment tool if you want to change the color of that a little bit further. I quite like the orange because I think it does work quite nicely, either orange or red. Um, but I think the orange works kind of quite nicely against all those greens there. So I'm just going to almost revert back to where we were slightly. Maybe add a little bit more texture and a little bit more in the clarity. That just helps give a bit more of a stronger outline, I find. I'm going to improve the blacks ever so slightly because even though she is small in the frame, um, we can maybe just get a little bit of detail, I think, from the bag that she's wearing there and again improve the shadows. So this overall should help us give us a little bit more detail and a little bit more impact on our subject in the center of the frame there. Now, if there's any areas that you've painted in just by accident, you can always hold down the Alt key and just use your adjustment brush again and just go around and just remove any of those adjustments that you've made to areas that you don't want. But I'm actually kind of quite happy with it and how it is there. So let's zoom back out. 
so we can already see we've actually got a lot more detail there um, in our subject. She's a lot more kind of uh, poignant within the frame. I think that little extra color boost has helped. Now, again, I'm going to do a couple more adjustments just to some of the greenery around the foreground here. Because even though we've added those vignettes, um, it, though it has kind of darkened the effect a little bit, I still wanted to have a little bit more saturation. So I'm just going to reduce the exposure that went on by default, but just increase that green just to make it that little bit more richer, a little bit more stronger there. Excellent. So there we go. So I think now we've created a much more atmospheric image in comparison to where we were. Now you can stop here if you like, if you kind of like the idea of what we've done by just adjusting the shadows and adding those vignettes around the image, you could take it further. If you're working with landscapes, the cool thing with HSL Sider is that you can play around with the colors that are in the frame. Um, with obviously landscapes, um, you're going to have a lot of greenery. So using things like the green layer, you can then shift the color balance of that a little bit more. We can make it a bit more psychedelic, almost almost looking kind of infrared. Um, we can make it a little bit softer and reduce those greens to make them look a bit more yellow, almost a bit more autumnal. And we can go into the yellow slider and again, play with those tones a little bit further. So there's way more things that we can kind of try and do in terms of trying to create more of a mood. But I think the initial atmosphere that we've created by adding those vignettes top and bottom and a couple left and right, improving the shadows and making sure we've got a nice strong subject in the middle has really helped. Obviously, cropping an image will always improve composition if you haven't been able to consider it or being able to get it exact in camera. Using the rule of thirds, I like to kind of come in a little bit closer, making sure we don't have any dead areas and that all the edges of our image have been thought about. So we're going to try and keep that path fairly central. You can make it uh, more constrained by just actually locking the tool here, and then that will make any changes in terms of your actual crop um, consistent. And so nothing goes out of uh, ratio. So I think we're going to come in a little bit here. I don't want to clip the top of that tree too much there. So we're pretty much just on that horizontal third, which is ever so slightly kind of below with the horizon, but I don't think that's going to be a major issue. We've got the path nicely aligned there. So once you're happy, you just press up. So there we go. So that's a really kind of simple way of creating a nice, darkened, moody, atmospheric image to landscape photographs. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. If you have, keep looking out for iPhotography for more. Thanks for watching.